Now, our reporter Yang Chengxi joins me from the medical pavilion at the expo. Uh, Chengxi, what is happening there at the pavilion? We're still very much in this pandemic, and people's attention and expectations of medical technology are high. What more can you tell us? Hi, Zhongshi. You're right. I am at the medical pavilion. It is a major section of this year's CIIE, covering more than 70,000 square meters and attracting more than 350 medical companies from around the world. And many of them will be having first-time product launches, whether it's a world premiere or Asian and China debut. And in fact, over 70 of these 350 uh, medical companies are either global Fortune 500 companies or industry leaders in their respective fields, whether it's precision radiotherapy or uh, kidney disease treatment and uh, genome sequencing. Now, we are now at the booth of Illumina, one of the industry leaders in genome sequencing, and we are joined by Mr. Li Qing, the Vice President and General Manager of Greater China at Illumina. Thank you very much for joining our program. Now, first of all, can you talk about what can the CIIE bring to multinational medical companies like yours? Yeah, I think uh, CIIE is a great stage for a company like Illumina. We uh, introduced uh, the cutting-edge technology to China market. Through this stage, we also uh, established the very strong connections with our customers, government, and the commercial partners. So last year, it was the first time we joined the you know, event. We gained quite a lot. That's why we decided to join, and we even have had a much bigger booth this year. Uh, Illumina, we will sign up around over one billion uh, RMB contract in the next four days. Now, uh, as we all know, the world is still in an ongoing pandemic and the genome sequence of COVID-19 was released in Shanghai early last year and it was sequenced in one of your machines, correct? Yes. Yes. Uh, that was very incredible. But what more can genome sequencing do? How does it benefit people's livelihood more specifically? Yeah, I think uh, now we see a lot of CDC, they use our sequencers uh, to track the virus, uh, to confirm the diagnosis. And more important, we see a lot of hospital clinical doctors, they uh, start explore some like new detections, you know, new uh, applications to detect some unknown pathogen much earlier, right? So that's not now the sequencing is not only the tour for the CDC, but uh, also a very important tour for clinical hospitals. Thank you very much. That was uh, Mr. Li Qing, the Vice President and General Manager at Greater China uh, at Illumina, a genome sequencing company uh, and an industry leader. Now, the uh, medical pavilion is not only for major multinational uh, corporations, but there is a section this year reserved for small and micro uh, medical companies to showcase their highlight products. And also running parallel with the CIIE's first day is the Hongqiao Economic Forum. And at the topic of one of the major subforums this year is the 20th anniversary of China's accession into the World Trade Organization, and which, uh, of course, uh, according to the Chinese government, is one of the major hallmarks of the country's commitment to free trade and multilateralism. Now, in, the, in President Xi Jinping's keynote speech to the opening ceremony yesterday, he said that over the past 20 years, China has achieved great accomplishments, both in terms of overall economic growth and the growth of uh, imports and exports, both in terms of goods and services. And participants that I interviewed uh, yesterday told me that the, the Import Expo is yet another uh, a symbol that China is upholding the same commitment uh, when entering the WTO 20 years ago. Zhong Shi. CDTN's Yang Chengxi reporting live at the pav medical pavilion there in the expo. Chengxi, thank you. Appreciate that. Let's get back to our discussion with Wang Dan and Andrew Wu in our Shanghai studio here. Mr. Wu, I'm sure you heard that. A lot of people are having bigger booths this year, expanded exhibit spaces, so a lot of competition among exhibitors on who attracts more audiences. You are doing the same with bigger exhibit space this year. What are your expectations for the expo in 2021? What do you hope to walk away from? Yeah, so, you know, we have a great result last year. Uh, you know, so we walk away from last year. Uh, we signed uh, new clients. You know, we signed with local and central governments. We signed with SOEs 
major financial institutions, we expanded our SME you know, client base, we accelerated the commercialization of digital products. So this is you know, what we achieved last year. And that was your so first appearance. That was our first experience. So right after that, we make a decision that uh, we need to expand and open a new office in Hongqiao, which we did. Uh, so this year you know, is phenomen will be phenomenal for us because we expanded our uh, you know, show space by 50%. So what you know, I really want to do is really to demonstrate to the you know, customers, to the clients in China, how we can use and leverage global data analytics mm. to help the economy, you know, help this to apply into multiple use cases mm. to accelerate the digital transformation, to improve efficiency and uh, make a better life for everybody. Mm. So this is what we want to do here. This is what I want every of our visitor will you know, go out and uh, you know, they know, you know how we can do that. Mm. And I know you will have a lot of visualization to do in order to bring to the visitors what you yeah. were talking about just now. But this year, 2021, is also an important uh, anniversary for Dun & Bradstreet. Four decades ago, you entered the Chinese market. I just asked Ms. Uh, one here to reflect on uh, China over the last 20 years, double that time, last 40 years. How do you and, you co and, and your colleagues reflect on how the Chinese market has evolved since the time of your first entry. Yeah, 40 years is just like a blink of eyes. Mm. It's, it's a long time, but it's a very short time period you know, uh, in, in the whole history. Um, but the tremendous you know, change you know, happened in China. Uh, for me, the two key words, or what we observe, are growth and innovation. We, we all know the Chinese market has grown in size, but also I want to mention it's a growth in the level of sophistication. Mm. Forty years ago, when we entered into China, we follow our multinational clients. We, we serve them, helping them to do business with China. But now we are helping our Chinese clients expanding globally. We're also helping our Chinese clients doing business in China. So our role is actually playing because our clients are becoming more sophisticated. But the more sophistication also means more demanding customer. So we have to innovate. So that means the market for us it's not only about the clients, it's also about the technology and the talent you know, we have attracted from the market, and then we get the best solution you know, to the clients. I always say you know, just bringing the global solution to China is not good enough. We have to innovate for China and in China. As a multinational, we have to keep up our game at the top level, and you know, we have to try our best in the China market. The market is sophisticated indeed. That is why we have economists to break down the market for us. Uh, Ms. Wang, a lot of my guests have told me that they are in this expo not just for the, the immediate effect of what the expo brings them, for example, new MOUs, for example, new client connections. They're also in it for the spillover effect that could benefit the company in the longer term. What would you say is the spillover, has been the spillover effect of the last three editions of the Expo? Well, when you look at actually one indicator is quite telling, and that is the foreign direct investment. So all those companies here are looking for long-term opportunities to invest in China. And last year, the FDI globally shrank, but China doubled its share from the 13% in pre-COVID level to 25% in 2020. That means last year, about one quarter of the global investment came to China. And most of that money are from Euro European and American investors trying to seek new opportunities here, not just as suppliers, but also to service the rising middle class in China, to seek new opportunities to emit in Western China, because we have a lot of different policy goals in the long term. And many are consistent with those companies' long term, um, long -term plans, like climate change, new energy, new material. So we are going to see a lot more investment in that front, and the policy support are there. Mm. Uh, Mr. Wu, can I ask your take on this also? When we talk about the <clears throat> spillover effects of the Expo, and looking at the investment side, how do you think uh, the Expo as a platform has bridged demand and supply, and in what will, will it be conducive to the Chinese economy? Yeah, so, you know, so Expo is actually showcased China market is already world market. Yeah, so in order to meet market needs, you have to invest. You have to put in money, you have to you know, get a new technology in place, you have to facilitate the digital transformation of every industry every aspect of our life. 
So that's where you know money. You see money coming in, and the money will make him return on this money, and uh, everybody will have a better life and uh, have a better shared future at the end. So this is really, I would say, is a center of innovation and actually in inspired innovation, mm. because as we are, when we are talking to our clients, you know, they have a new demand, uh, at, uh, right, right at the CIE, and then we we take it back and we think about how we can do and you know what we can do to meet their requirement in mm. the next year. Mm. It's been a pleasure to have this conversation with both of you. Thank you so much for coming in today. We really appreciate it. Thank you. And that does it for us today. From Shanghai, tomorrow we'll take a look at how the import goods market is performing in China. But for now, let's hand things back over to Beijing. The news continues with my colleague Dong Ning at the CTTN World Headquarters there.